Hey guys, well I have always loved Halloween. I've always loved vintage and antique things. And I definitely like to recreate projects, especially for Halloween, along those lines when and where I can. And I definitely like coming up with projects that you guys can do too. And for very little money whenever possible. So, in this case, I have been very, very inspired for some time by vintage jack-o'-lantern paper mache pumpkins that would have been made in the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, even before then, and using the $1 orange, very standard, very plain, styrofoam, I don't know, six or seven inch pumpkins from the Dollar Tree that they have out seemingly every year, I have come up with a couple of vintage looking paper mache pumpkins myself. And we have two very different styles, but they're both very, very similarly made. And if you guys like the look of these and you want to make something like that yourself, stay tuned. This is what it starts with. It's just one of these very, very simple $1 pumpkins from the Dollar Tree that is made out of styrofoam. This one has a very loose stem. As you can see, it's on like a toothpick. I mean, these things are just made of nothing. Um, but they can be built up to be so much more. So this is the same technique on the BOS book covers, the bottle I made with the bat on it. If you want to refer to those videos as well, same exact technique with the, the decoupage or the uh, paper corpsing, whatever term you want to use. It is it's a paper towel, two ply, uh, just shred it apart. You know, you take apart the two plies, like so, and you just tear it all up into smaller pieces. And uh, do a little bit at a time. You know, you don't have to do a big mountain of it first. And then you can use either like matte Mod Podge, unless you want the whole thing shiny, or these are like 10 for a buck at back to school time. So that's what I bought was like 10 of these. Works awesome. And then I have over here a container of water, a couple of brushes, a big one and a small one. And then something to kind of, you know, pour your glue into. This is all dried paint in here. And mix it with a little bit of water and then go from there. So once you've got all your stuff together, all you've got to do is kind of figure out what um, eye and nose and mouth shapes you want. You know, if you want a nose or you want a giant eye or whatever the heck you want to do. And on this one, this is going to be a little bat pumpkin. So I am going to be making some very simple little bat wing shapes to attach to the sides. Here in a bit, I'll show you that. In the meantime, I think I'm going to make a little bit more of a like an angry shaped eyeball or evil shaped eyes so as opposed to them being kind of rounded and and big and open I'm going to make them more like upside down triangles and I'll probably do a regular triangle nose since this is a vintage style and that little red triangle nose is almost on every one of those vintage pumpkins and a mouth probably similar probably similar to this one, but with little bat type fangs. I'm going to use my bigger brush here, loading it up with glue and dabbing it in the water, and I'm just going to lay out kind of a basic like eyeball shape on here so that there is a wet surface to begin with. Stick my brush in the water so it doesn't dry out. I'm going to take couple little pieces of this, you know, smaller pieces of the paper towel and kind of wad it up like so and stick it on the place where I want the eyeball and start to kind of shape that. Making sure that it's kind of bunched up toward, so it'll end up like this. You'll have bulk toward here but flatter toward this side. It does not have to be perfect. Anything is sticking out later can either be cut off or it can be, um, you know, you just stick another little piece of paper towel on top of it, as I'll show you. You know, once this is all done, glued down and dried, you know, stick it to that and just kind of smooth it out. You know what I mean? So, 
it's just a process, just like the bottle in the book, of just going back through and making sure that all the surfaces are, are glued and, you know, coated with that glue water mixture to some degree so that you can so you can end up with these these basic cutouts. The rest of it all around these little windows that'll be the features will be covered in at least one layer. You can do as many as you like, but at least one layer for my purposes of the paper toweling stuff. And I'm kind of shaping this as I go too. Don't be afraid to get your fingers in there and just kind of start to shape it. <laughs> this thing keeps coming off. It's okay. That's going to be done up like this stem, as you will see. And that will definitely stay where it is, where I want it to be at the end. See, I've basically got the features on for this guy. I just kept adding little bits of the uh, paper towel shreds in and around. I, you know, this is kind of an accident, but I like how it came out that there's a wrinkle right there where, you know, smile lines would be. But I just kept kind of folding them and crunching them and smoothing them in and pressing some down and using my smaller brush here as you can see I switched to the smaller brush. It is a bit, little bit easier, I find, for control in doing this. And um, now I'm just going to put a layer of the paper toweling all over the rest of the whole thing, build up that stem, and uh, probably use the bigger brush for that. And all I'm going to use for the base of, you know, putting paper toweling on the stem and building it up is a piece of wire. It's about, I don't know, this is about a six inch piece. And because this particular stem wants to keep coming off, I'm just going to stick that down 
in past the length of the stem into the pumpkin itself. And then just kind of twist this and curl it and get it to do something like that. He's like, hey, 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 man, looking pretty good there. <laughs> anyway, got the stem shaped the way I want it. It's a little bit different from this one, but not much. You can change it as you kind of, you know, build up the paper towel around here too. But this is all the basic bare bones. That's it. one bunch of paper towel wound around the stem so far and I've just taken a second bunch and I'm kind of winding that around and what I'm keeping in mind is just this organic shape that I want to make like this of the stem where it's bulkier at the bottom and tapers toward the top and with this sort of tail here I'm making one of these like this if you ever really look at a pumpkin stem you see that it doesn't just you know sit right on top or go straight into the pumpkin or you know grow straight out of it it's got like these bits up here and I like odd numbers I'm going to do five I believe most pumpkins have that anyway or something like it and so I'm just kind of making these little tails just you know adding glue and water and kind of pushing it down and mushing it in and making it as smooth as possible with the paintbrush and that is what I am going to keep doing all the way around until I have five you know like the tree root kind of things As you can see I have gotten the basic eye shape I want and the little triangle nose and the, the big wide grinning mouth. I am going to add um, some bumps like these for cheeks uh, as well and do the one coat of paper towel all over of course and I've pretty much gotten the stem done. I did some bigger sort of branchy things on this one but just really going for random. I, I kind of like the juxtaposition specifically of the realistic stem and making it a realistic type pumpkin, but still having that vintagey sort of look to it. It For some reason in my mind, that's looking a little bit more monstrous and evil because that is what's going on. 
And before I do any more of the paper mache though, I'm going to take a piece of, it's corrugated, but it's thin cardboard. This is just like a priority mail box and draw out some little wings. Those are gonna go on the sides because this is gonna be the bat pumpkin. So just draw out something like this and then cut out two of those. Okay, all covered. And I did more than like a single layer of paper towel on the wings. I did two, three little layers just to kind of hide the fact that it's cardboard a little bit more. I just didn't feel like the styrofoam really needs that. But I even did a, a single layer on the bottom. So I'm gonna kind of leave it like this where the most air can get around it to dry and then paint it up. I have also gone ahead and taken just regular old white acrylic paint and painted a coat no need to be neat at this point. All the edges and everything else around the eyes and around the features are going to be painted over too. But to get one coat of white in there, obviously it'll need more than that. So just to get one in there and drying with the rest of the um, paper towel. And uh, done the same with a coat of red in the nose. And a coat of red with where the basic lines are going to be in the teeth. Again, just to get a coat in there. I haven't done the white of the teeth yet because I don't want it to blend too much with the red. I will let this dry, then go in and do the white of the teeth and the second coats on the other features and go on from there. And now that that red in the mouth is dried, a coat of white. Again, not worrying about being too tidy, just blocking out shapes and putting that first coat down. And then when the entire thing is dry, I'm going to go back in and do, like I said, a second coat and finish the eyes. All painted black with one coat because it's black over mostly white I'm definitely going to go in with the second coat of the all over black as well all of the features are finished okay so I have started the stem it's just basic green paint that I've used this is this is the one here um, no mixing or anything not even with water just to get the, the stem coated and get a base green on it. And then I have dry brushed some black, more solid color at the top, and then kind of dry brushed it down the stem. Now I'm gonna take a darker brown, which is this one here. This is exactly what I did to the other one. So it's this, any brown acrylic. And I'm going to kind of go over some of this stuff again with the brown and then dry brush it down not just dry brushing I mean some of its water added so that it's more of a wash you see just at your discretion so that it ends up like that so it's green and brown and kind of black mixed together
close up here of what it is that's going on. So I got brown, pretty much, you know, like darker in the crevices and all of that. A mixture of dry brushing and wet brushing all over the whole thing. And uh, let the, the green poke out. I, I went back over with black at the top and then it kind of smushes down into the, the brown and, and whatnot. Sort of gives it a rotten look, I think, so. That's all I've got going on with the stem. It looks way more complicated than it is. I mixed just a tiny bit of the black in the really deep crevices too and blended that out and that's it. That's it for the stem. So we have finished up the stem and got uh, even a little bit of black in some of these, you know, really deep crevices, just blended it all out, made it look realistic. I'm really happy with the way it looks. And uh, given the whole thing a really good, careful, thick coat of black again because over the white and the orange and you know the pumpkin color uh, little holes and stuff through the the paper really show through that texture and because of those holes and the bumps and then whatever you know um, there's definitely pin sized uh, holes that want to show through sometimes so second coat pretty important and then over the wings too and then uh, now I have mixed up just a little bit of uh, black and white, made a gray that would go really well, like you can test on the bottom if you want to, that would make a really nice dry brush shadow or contrast in these creases. Just like over here, what I used for the uh, shadow over here was black, white, and a little bit of that green. Uh, may have even been yellow but I, I mean when you're mixing it up play with it just I made like a really light grayish brown to get into those creases dry brushed and you know blend them out just to give the whole thing some contrast so there's the difference there's a difference there and this is just black and white you know and uh, when that's done I'll go back in with a little bit more black and kind of blend out up here more because I want there to kind of be shadow. dry brushed in there and around the features so it ends up kind of being like a reverse shadowing because the gray is lighter than the black but I just did it as if it was a darker color like like this one this one not only by the way has that um, greenish yellow uh, grayish color in the the valleys there around the pumpkin, but it does have a little bit darker brown, like the same I used on the stem, around the bottom of the stem and some of the features for extra shadow, just to bring those out a little bit more. But on here, it's just the gray, and there are a couple places I went back over with uh, black and smoothed it into that as well, and then I did a little bit more black around the edges of the stem on the top. But this is pretty much it except for the glitter paint. He has been completed except for the glitter. I did uh, just really neatly went in with black around the edge of the eyes and I went over the yellow a little bit more and everything just to tidy everything up. <sighs> so bizarre and cute if I do say so myself. And this is the glitter paint. This is Martha Stewart's multi-surface glitter. I did hear that this stuff is going to be discontinued because I've heard that Martha Stewart is not going to make her crafts anymore. I hope that's not true. Um, she actually really did make some amazing stuff. Regardless, this particular color, and, and this is um, an iridescent, otherwise clear uh, paint with iridescent glitter in it. So 
but this is the color sugar cube and when I found this it's like between two and three bucks somewhere in there at like Michael's there's a lot of brands that make this just check out Amazon eBay Michael's you know all kinds of craft stores art stores and uh, this is not expensive and a little bit goes a really long way I mean like this guy over here has two coats on him and I, I really hardly used any paint and it's so shimmery and shiny and amazing and somehow adds whoops adds that extra vintagey type look oops 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 almost forgot the pink cheeks <laughs> I've mixed up a little bit of red and white here they are just red on the other pumpkin but I figured on the black with so much red on this guy kind of do this I'm gonna paint kind of tidy just tidy little circles here and I'm going to do about two coats because it is on the black before I continue the rest of my glitter painting. Okay, so I have blended in the edges of those little pink cheeks now. <laughs> I think he looks good and freaky. And I'm going to finish up the glitter paint and show you what it looks like. So there you go, guys. Cute little vintage style. Fairly easy to make. Very cheap to make pumpkins for your... Halloween decor. Enjoy!